Hello, everyone, and welcome to the program. I'm Angela Court McKenzie, and I want to welcome you to this very special time of reading God's Word and studying in the Scriptures. This is our study time today, and I'm so glad you're here. I'm going to be sharing about overcoming discouragement. It seems to be something that all of us go through. It is, it is a human tendency. It's a human issue. Ever since uh, the fall in the Garden of Eden, part of the result of sin is the conflict between humans and our own nature that is fragile and um, can be easily hurt and discouraged. And I want to talk to you about what the Bible tells us about overcoming discouragement. And I really trust it's going to be a blessing. There are some of you today that are watching and you feel like you're, you're, you've tied a knot on the end of the rope and you're right at the end. But the Lord sees you and he loves you. And, and I hope that you'll stay with me because I truly believe what I'm going to share out of the scriptures, some out of the New Testament, some out of the Old Testament, is, is going to be an encouragement because God's word will come and strengthen us in the night seasons. God is always there. And sometimes because we can't see him in person, we think he's forgotten us, but he hasn't. So are you dealing with discouragement? Well, stay with me and I'm going to share two or three points from the scripture that I truly believe will help you. But first, why don't you take a moment and let two or three friends know that we're on the air and I encourage them uh, to come. And you might even know someone that this program might be a blessing to feel free to share it and get the word out because it's, it's, it's just something that I, I see and I've dealt with myself. I've known about friends who have gone through very dark seasons and I'm talking Christian friends, friends who love the Lord. And yet life is just kind of, you know, tossed them to and fro. And in the middle of that, sometimes our faith is challenged and we know, what does God say about that? What does the scripture say? I mean, if I love God, shouldn't everything just be great? Isn't, if God is so good, why do bad things happen to good people? Yeah, but if God is good, why do, why do um, good things happen to bad people? I, we, we have to kind of come and bring all of our questions to the scriptures and bring our lives before the Lord and get in his word and see what God would say to us. Because I'll tell you, when my life has been rocky the most, it's when I come back and I just come to his word. And so I first want to encourage you to start in a passage of scripture from 1 Samuel chapter 28. And uh, so while you're getting your Bible, turn to 1 Samuel chapter 28, and then we're also going to turn over into the New Testament into Romans. Discouragement has been called something that is... You, not unique to anyone. Uh, it's the opposite. Dis is the opposite of courage. So courage is the strengthening to move forward. Courage is the wherewithal to know in your heart and believe that things will be done and the ability to step out to into the darkness and to the unknown and to do things and to accomplish. So discouragement is the very opposite of that. It is a a weakening. It is a, an intimidation feeling almost. You just want to hunker down as if you were a turtle. You just want to come back in your shell and just live there and just survive to the next day. We can feel discouragement both just with the issues of life and we can also have discouragement spiritually. We do have an enemy, the devil, who comes and buffers the believer, wanting to discourage us and to get us to give up on God and give up on our faith. But I'll tell you, friend, don't you do that. Absolutely not. There is an anchor of hope that's being thrown out, and all you have to do today is to take a hold of it. I'm not saying that by the end of this program, you're going to be out of everything, but I'll tell you right now, I know this. I know that when we come and worship the Lord and come and study and bring everything to the Lord, even the dark places, that there is hope, there is healing, there is like fresh water for our hurting souls, and there is comfort. What did the prophet say? Oh, the prophet said, Isaiah, he, the Lord was speaking to him and he said these words, comfort ye, comfort ye my people. And if you're feeling discouraged, the Lord has comfort for you today. You know, there's two kinds, or kind of two qualities of discouragement. 
there's a discouragement of which is kind of called mild discouragement. You know, that's when we're dealing with the minor pressures of life and that affects our emotions and we're down for a little bit and or we're frustrated and we just kind of see, wow, this is not good. I don't like that. But we, we're still moving and we're still going forward. And then though there's strong discouragement, which can drain us spiritually, drain us mentally, drain us physically. It's as if uh, our heart melts within us. We have no energy to go on. We begin to think, just not worth it. That is strong discouragement. And David in 1 Samuel chapter 27 is finding himself that same place. Yes, David, the great king of Israel, the sweet psalmist of Israel, the one who years earlier, remember David and Goliath, he was strong, he was courageous, he went up against the, the giant when Goliath came against the people of Israel, and he said, oh, you come with me with your spear and sword, but I come to you in the name of the Lord, and with three little stones and a sling, mighty David, he flicked that rock in just the right place, and it hit Goliath, and he fell, and the people were saved. But years later, as he's going through the different seasons of life, he's had his friend, his king, King Saul, turn on him out of jealousy. And David, instead of being the protege, he becomes the hunted. Instead of being the one who is known as the great son of Israel, he is known, according to King Saul, as the troublemaker in Israel and has to be dealt with. And Saul and his own internal brokenness and just evil intentions has made life so hard for David that David finds himself in a place of deep discouragement. This has happened over years of time. This is the same David that was anointed to be the next king, the same David that was anointed in front of his brothers, that was anointed by the great prophet Samuel, that loved God, that did everything he knew to do to be a servant to his crown and country. And yet Saul is relentless after him. And in 1 Samuel chapter 27, it seems that David thinks he is at the end of his tether. And he says this, David thought to himself, one of these days I shall be destroyed by the hand of Saul. Boy, that's a big statement for a person of faith to make. It's as if he sees no other out and discouragement has just overwhelmed him and overcome him. And he says, I give up. It's inevitable. One of these days I'll be destroyed by the hand of Saul. The best thing I can do is to escape to the land of the Philistines. The Philistines, you remember Goliath, who was a Philistine? <laughs> he thinks the best thing I'm going to do is get out of my own home country and just go live among the enemy. I, I, I'm a warrior. I'm clever. I can go and kind of uh, work the system over there. And if I just live with them, he says, Saul will give up looking for me anywhere in Israel and I will slip out of his hand. So David and his 600 men actually did that. That is what discouragement does. It seems to show us that there is no more opportunity for any change. The situation will never change. And then that heaviness sets in and David's heart just melted. And in his season of discouragement, he went and he lived among the Philistines. But when he did that, it, it wasn't a great thing. David did a number of decisions. He was a, a warrior, but he ended up dealing with enemies and he had to maneuver and he just... Uh, it kind of made some deals with the, the, the Philistine king that wasn't really, you know, altogether great. It was, it was okay, but it, it put him in kind of negative and treacherous circumstances. And as the story goes on, you see how the Lord ends up bringing him back around. And that's what the Lord wants to do with you today. Uh, and that's why I'm coming. I'm bringing a portion of scripture you don't usually, uh, we don't usually have a lot of messages about. You know, it's kind of an, an interesting chapter. I mean, just before, a few chapters before, David is absolutely celebrated and he's anointed and the word of the Lord has been given to him. But life has just continuously been chipping away at his confidence, chipping away at his hope, chipping away at, at his dreams and the vision that he thought God had for his life. And and in discouragement, he just goes and he makes a, what I call a deal with the devil. I'm leaving. I'm out of here. I'm going to go live among those who don't even 
know God, love God, because you know what? At least I might find some safety there. But actually it doesn't. And God, through the next, you have to read the next few chapters, the Lord brings him back to his own land. Some of us, when we are so discouraged, we step out of relationships. We leave our home. We make decisions and we leave our home. But I'm telling you, the Lord is speaking to you today and he is saying, I want you to return. Even the prodigal son, when he left family, the father was looking for him to return, waiting for him to return. God has never given up on us. If you are listening to me today, and if your heart has any warmth towards the Lord, even if you feel like you've walked away from God, or you've walked away from the call of God on your life, or you have walked away from God, you know God has called you to because of discouragement. You just think God will never answer these prayer requests. And I don't know where to go. My friend, I'm telling you, the Lord is coming to you today and he is bringing encouragement and he wants you to know that the door is still open that the invitation is still valid, that the anointing is still there, that the calling is without repentance. What God put on your life, he's not going to take away, but you're going to have to make a turn and say, I'm not going to continuously live away from the blessing of the Lord. I'm going to turn and I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back. Don't let discouragement make you a prodigal. Don't let discouragement cause you to lose hope in God. Don't let discouragement cause you to make deals that end up putting you in more difficulty than even you are today. Discouragement will reorient our vision. Discouragement will reorient what we think is true and right and possible. But the Lord is coming to you today and he's saying, no, 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 come on, come on. There's a number of things God wants to do through this season of discouragement in your life. And we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to look at some other portions of scripture. And I want to share with you how this season, this discouragement can actually become valuable to you and how God will help you to overcome the discouragement. Don't give up. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on your faith. Oh, there's so much more. And the hand of Almighty God will come in as an eagle who comes and sweeps down and rescues her eaglet when he sees him falling out of the nest. Is God's hand too short that he can't reach out? Never, the Bible says. So there's more for you. More I want to share when we come back right after this break. Stay tuned. Super Channel Orlando is part of the Super Channel Network in Orlando, Florida, and is especially designed to bring you a unique blend of programs. This channel can be viewed via antenna all across Central Florida, as well as in Jacksonville, Channel 18.3, and in Tampa, Channel 19.1. We welcome your gifts of support along with your prayer request. To donate, call 1-800-720-1940 or mail your check to the address shown below. For PayPal donations, go to superchannel.com. We are continuing our look at how to overcome discouragement. Earlier, we reviewed a chapter in 1 Samuel chapter 28, and it tells us about King David, the beloved king of Israel, the sweet psalmist, the writer of many psalms, the boy, or when he was a boy, the one who came and defeated Goliath when he came up against God's people, mighty warrior, defender of Israel. And yet through a season of his life, he was continuously hunted by King Saul after his heart turned evil out of jealousy. And in chapter 28, David says, you know what? This will never change. It's better for me to go live among the enemy so King Saul will quit hunting after me. That is the heavy side of discouragement. It's not just having a bad day. It is the feeling where we are so internally intimidated, where we are so broken and fragile that we actually 
lose the interest in even having vision. We lose interest in um, moving forward. And the enemy of our soul and life and circumstances can be like a tornado, like a hurricane that moves in on us. And if we don't know how to go back to the word, discouragement can actually reorient our vision, cause us to want to do things that are contrary to God's word, cause us to want to shrivel and back down. When God is saying to us, there is hope and healing and comfort for you. And I want to share with you five keys, five thoughts. These are not magic keys, my friend. When we are caught in a season and a place where we find our heart is melting within us, where we think thoughts like, David, I see no way out. I want you to know that we're standing with you. The feelings are real, but they're not final. The feelings are real, but they're not final. Yes, where you are today may be very difficult. Some it may be of our own sin and doing and foolishness, and you need to repent of that. It doesn't matter how many sermons you hear about overcoming discouragement until we are cleaned by the blood of the lamb and we are transparent with God and we bring our own sin to him, knowing that he will never reject us when we repent. The only person that can never get saved is the person that never repents. Repentance and humility is the doorway to the next chapter. Humility and repentance and acknowledging our sin is what triggers the forgiveness and the grace of God. So if you are finding yourself in a season of discouragement today because of your own actions, simply say, is there room at the cross for me, Lord? (laughs) Yes. That old hymn says, though millions have come, there's still room for one. There's room at the cross for you. There's an entire psalm that's a repentance psalm, Psalm 51. David, (laughs) when he had made his own mistakes, he said, cleanse me that I may be clean. And whatever you do, Lord, don't take your spirit away from me. So repent. Come to the Lord knowing that The blood of Christ can wash and will wash away. The book of 1 John says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse. Have you ever seen a car that has been absolutely out on a mud day, out in the hills, out in the mud pit, and it's just filthy. And the water, the power of the water, the pressure of the water just moves over that car and the mud has to leave and the mud begins to just fall down. And all of a sudden, the sparkle of the paint comes back through and that car is as shiny as new. The blood of Christ washes and cleanses. So just be real with the Lord. He loves you and ask him to forgive you. And then say, Lord, help me. Help me rebuild. Help me, Lord. I'm your servant. I'm your clay. Remake me and mold me. And see what God can do. There is a second chance, a second chapter, a third chapter, a fourth chapter. The Bible says, even if a righteous man would slip seven times, the Lord, the Lord will hold him up. God's not looking for perfection. He is looking for dedication. You set your sights towards obeying God. Set your sights towards the cross. Set your eye on loving God. And I promise you the Lord will never let you down. He'll never drop you out of his hand. He loves you with an everlasting love. But some other kinds of discouragement actually come when we are caught up in the intensity of things that have nothing to do with our sin. It is someone else's decision. It was someone else's hurt that brought the discouragement to us, or it was just life. Recent deaths of lost, uh, of loved ones, or losing something that meant so much, or just feeling that things will never change. It goes from just having a bad day to actually where even when you pray, you don't even really believe God's listening. Oh, no, no, no. Let me, let me take you back to the word. Remember, your feelings are real, but they're not final. Let's go back and let's, let's refresh. There's fresh water here for the taking through God's word. 
One thing I want to tell you about, if you would allow me just to help you through this season, is that to come out of discouragement, to overcome discouragement, you do need a fresh encounter with God's Word because the Word of God is living water. That's one description of it. It's bread. It's nourishment to a hungry, starving, hurting, empty soul. The Word of God, just get back in and begin to read the Scriptures. When we're very discouraged many times, we don't want to do the discipline of reading. We just like, ah, I don't know, I'm just going to turn on the veg and you know, watch a hundred movies. No, 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 no. That won't help you. That won't help you. Have a fresh encounter with God's word. Let me read to you words that may really meet to you where you are today. This is from Psalm 40. I waited patiently for the Lord. You feel like that? And he turned to me and he heard my cry. And he lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire. God lifted when he felt like he was caught in quicksand and only going down. I turned to the Lord. I waited patiently for the Lord and he heard me. So he lifted him up. God lifts you up. God lifts me up. Thank you, Lord. He also, it says, he set my feet on a rock and he gave me a firm place to stand. God lifts us up and he gives us a firm place to stand. Then look at this. I love this part. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes God his trust. Have a fresh encounter with God's word. Go back to Psalm 40 and just read it and read it and read it and let it begin to just nourish you when you're in that place now, number two, get up and get moving. How do you overcome discouragement? You need to get up and get moving. Discouragement has the ability to, to actually be debilitative. It, it almost freezes us where we are. We don't want to move. But I'm going to encourage you uh, to get up and to keep moving. In, in 1 Kings chapter 19, uh, Elijah, after doing some great things for God, though, he, he really went through a season of discouragement. And he said, you know, Lord, I'm done. Just take my life. I've had enough. <laughs> Elijah, the same prophet who called down fire from heaven, the same prophet, you know, who was faithful to God. He was susceptible to discouragement. He was susceptible to the outside influences that just wanted to come and crush him. And, and it didn't matter if he had a calling. He still had an enemy of his soul, but God spoke to him and he said, this. He said, Lord, I just had enough. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. I just want to fall asleep. But the Bible says, at once an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. So what's the second thing about getting up and getting over uh, or getting over, um, excuse me, overcoming discouragement? Get up. That's right. Make a plan and make it maybe a small plan because that's number three. Take it baby steps. Moving out of a season of discouragement is not one big giant leap. It's the, it's the baby steps of faith. Back in Exodus, when God told the children of Israel, this land is going to be yours, but you're not going to take it in one day. Little by little will you overtake the land. Some of you may have a dramatic deliverance, and I'm going to pray for you before we go. But some of you may also just take what I call the baby step path back. And that's okay. But get up and get moving. Go back. Come on. Come on. You cannot live in your house coat forever. <laughs> you can't live in your pajamas forever. You can't just keep turning down opportunities forever. The Lord is not done with you, my dear friend. God loves you. Number four, let it, let it produce perseverance. This is really very powerful. When we're going through difficult seasons, it's not just about what's happening to us. It is about what God wants to take what's happening to us and produce things in us. Uh, Romans 8, let me read that to you. It says that we know that all things work together for good to those who love him and are, and are called according to his purpose and that we are more than conquerors. God is wanting to produce fruit in you and perseverance in you. And that's a hard pill to swallow sometimes. We want to quickly just get out of it. That's why I said, you, I, was, I think you probably will do baby steps out of it. But if the Lord is 
is so mighty and so wonderful to know where we are. Trust me, my dear friend. That means he knows where we are when we're in discouragement. So let it build the perseverance in you. Don't let it build bitterness in you. Refuse to let a root of bitterness to do that. Go back to the scriptures. Paul says, in all these things, this is Romans chapter 8, 37, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor demons nor things in the present or future or any powers or height or death or anything will be able to separate us from the love of God. Lastly, one little last point to leave with you is to focus on the glory that waits ahead. 2 Corinthians 4.17. This is a very powerful, this is a very powerful verse. One of the best ones to memorize is 2 Corinthians 4.17. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an, an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but is unseen, for what is temporary and will pass, but what is unseen is eternal. We set our eyes on an eternal glory that awaits. Father, I pray for all my friends who are watching today who are dealing with discouragement. And I pray right now by the name of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit that you will lift them up, lift the burden, and let them have fresh faith awaken in their souls. Thank you, Father, for the promises. Thank you for the word. Thank you, Lord, that you know where they are and you are taking them by the hand and you will lead them through this dark season. We thank you, Father, for healing and restoration, for encouragement, and for redemption in every part of our life. Be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Keep your eye on the glory ahead. Take baby steps. Stay in the word. Get moving. And the Lord will help you to overcome discouragement. God bless you. The best days are ahead. Thanks for joining us. I look forward to seeing you next time when we get into the word and see what God has to say for our life. Until then, stay encouraged. Remember, your feelings are real, but they are not final. Keep your eye on the glory.